2020 has been a year of a ton of great games, but some stinkers too. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 10 games that sucked in 2020. Starting off with number 10, it's Madden 21. This is a special case because while the game itself is mostly serviceable, the problem is that in many ways it's almost completely unchanged from last year's version and in some cases actually worse. Which, I mean, why? Franchise mode remains almost completely unchanged from last year's Madden. The new mode, called The Yard, feels uh, underdeveloped to say the very least, and many players have noted that it feels like the ultimate team mode is kind of the thing that's getting the most attention. The problem is ultimate team modes are basically where EA inserts most of their microtransaction schemes into their sports games, and Madden 21 has got everything you would expect. It has got all the currencies, the daily challenges, the pressure tactics, it's got it all, every method to try to get players to spend real money on microtransactions in a game that already costs 60 bucks at least. Another huge complaint are the bugs, which can be game breaking. Uh, Madden 21's gameplay is dependent on animations, so if a player starts bugging out, it's not just annoying, it could potentially lose you the game. There's also bugs that are present that have been plaguing the Madden series for years now, which are still unaddressed. Again, people have complained for years and they're just like, you know what, whatever, we are going to set our developers in a different direction. The direction of not changing anything in the game, but instead adding microtransaction laden modes. Basically, players hated this one because they felt like it was Madden 20 with a bunch of unnecessary crap thrown in and sold again for full price. Also, the story mode just flat out sucks. Ah, uh, cat, dog, penguin. At number 9 is Fast and Furious Crossroads. When this game was first announced, there was hope that this could be a fun one, but what we got, uh, it was not that. It's obviously based on the wildly popular Fast and Furious movie franchise. It's basically a linear, story-based car combat game that doesn't really do much special, and it doesn't really stand out. The story's kind of just flatline right from the start. Instead of following the Fast and Furious crew, we're stuck with two new characters at the start of the game, and the whole opening bit is just so slow and awful. I mean, eventually you get to do some fun stuff that you would expect in a Fast and Furious game, but it only makes a small fraction of what is a four hour game. Yeah, a game that takes four hours to beat and the stuff you'd expect from a Fast and Furious game takes up a small fraction of it. I feel like I could repeat that several times and it wouldn't be enough. But what you're mainly doing is just driving from checkpoint to checkpoint, listening to this half-assed voice acting, and occasionally you have to ram an enemy off the road. Graphics wise, it's not terrible. At night, it actually even looks pretty decent, but the cutscene character models, mm, they just don't look great considering how much time you spend looking at them. Hey, if the game had much else going for it, it wouldn't really be a big deal, but it doesn't. Like this game could have been one of those goofy fun games, but instead it's just one of those boring licensed games that no one cares about. And number eight is Resident Evil Resistance. Like, okay, the Resident Evil 3 remake was pretty good, but the tack down multiplayer mode is not. The idea of it is great. It's four survivors versus a mastermind who can place traps and summon monsters, and make life harder for the survivors. It sounds actually really cool. Coolest thing in the mode is the mastermind's ability to take direct control over like Mr. X and some of the other iconic monsters. What isn't cool, at least at launch, was the network. Even on the best connections, these matches would stutter and it'd take minutes at a time to actually join one. And the matches themselves would be prone to timing out or rubber banding. It could be unplayable. The balance wasn't that good either. Every match felt like it saw the survivors either easily win if they worked together or get stuck in a drawn out slog where they'd lose because somebody wouldn't stick with the group. And there's only four maps when it originally came out, so it got repetitive really quick. Just wasn't enough depth to really give it legs, and the constant connection problems made it much worse. It's not the worst thing in the Resident Evil franchise, but considering it's a great idea, it fell really short. And number seven is the 13 remake, which, I mean, the real thing to say here is why did they remake 13? The original still looks decent, honestly. It has this comic book look that gave it a timeless feel. The remake, though, total mess. First off, the visual style, it's not really as good, to be honest. Like, they could have improved the original visual style. It looks too different for me. Also, it is buggy. No, buggy doesn't say it. It is ridiculously buggy. It, it seems like you cannot go for a minute without some bizarre glitch. 
interfering with your fun. The whole thing just looks cheap. You got stuttery cutscenes, some terrible animations, probably some of the worst I've seen from a major publisher in years. But like, seriously, look at this animation where the main guy cracks his knuckles. It looks ridiculously bad. Everything else, it isn't much better. Like, the combat's weak, the enemy AI is as basic as it gets, it just sucks. Like, seriously, if you want to play 13, just play the original. It's not the greatest game of all time or anything, but it's way better than this. And it has a style to it that there is no evidence of in this remake. At number 6 is Marvel's Avengers, and this is a game that really should have had everything going for it. Disney's seemingly infinite money, like this should have been great, but you know, greed. Yeah, it's a weird one because the gameplay itself is solid enough. It looks great and it's pretty good to control, but everything contextualizing the gameplay is terrible. Why? Because for some reason, someone decided that this should be a live service game. Like, I can't imagine why this would be a game you would think is a live service game, but yep, there's confusing currencies, there's daily missions, there's predatory prices on costumes and stingy stuff. Like, you're not picking up a lot of things that you need. Like, it's a drag, and it's actually worse than most games of this nature. They knew players would want a wide range of different costumes. That's basically a superhero game tradition. But instead of just giving you a lot of cool costumes for free, like the recent Spider-Man games, they throw them in a real money shop and expect you to buy them. And these are at prices that would make a free-to-play game blush in a game that you paid 60 bucks for. It doesn't help that once you finish the campaign, the grind that keeps people playing these types of games just is not interesting enough. There's also bad word of mouth with the lack of things to actually do and like i mean you heard like 96 percent of its player base just disappeared wonder why it should have been great but greedy publishers just killed this one at number five is warcraft 3 reforged remember this one from the beginning of the year warcraft 3 is like one of blizzard's most beloved games and the modding community spawned some of the most influential games ever like dota for instance so when they announced they were going to remake this game I think everyone was excited, but eh, what we got was not the remake that Blizzard promised. Like they said that the game was going to have new cinematic cutscenes and voice acting, but that wasn't there. They also implied the story and missions would be reworked and updated, but that's not there either. Out of the 60 plus story missions, they only changed three of them in any noticeable way. What's even worse though is what they took out. There's no more custom campaigns, no single player custom maps, no single player profiles, clans, ranked ladders, all the stuff that was present in the original game is just gone. On top of that, the original client doesn't even work anymore, so you're basically forced to play this game if you want to play Warcraft 3 online instead of the superior original version. And the game is just weird looking. Like, they did not do enough with the visuals to update it, so it just looks jarring and ugly a lot of the time. I'm not saying that the original technically looks better, but it is more consistent and, like, uh, for taking out promised features and generally half-assing a remake, for one of the best RTS games of all time, Reforged is definitely a game that sucked in 2020. At number four is Dawn of Fear, which is Resident Evil combined with a hint of Silent Hill and a big heaping helping of jank. It does not even feel like a $25 game you buy off Steam, even though that is what it is. What it feels like is some kind of ambitious Half-Life mod or something. The presentation is super weak right out of the gate, and the translated text is super awkward. There's no voice acting. The interior of the mansion looks okay, but moving around does not feel good. There is no turning animation, so your guy just jerks around like crazy. I mean, it looks like trash. The puzzles are simplistic, the combat is just a write-off, the guns feel like pea shooters and the enemies are goofy. You don't even need to fight them either, you can just avoid it super easily. Like, probably the one thing it has going for it is the music. It's got a nice Silent Hill guitar twang to it, but that's one of the two nice things I can say about it. The other is that it's short, which is a mercy, but like you're paying 25 bucks for a two hour game, that's bad. <laughs> At number three is Those Who Remain. You know games like Amnesia or Outlast? It's like one of those, but bad. Those Who Remain is an atmospheric first-person horror game, meaning your protagonist is basically helpless and you have to solve puzzles and avoid scary stuff and so on and so forth. The intro is basically a wholesale ripoff from Silent Hill 2 where a grieving man gets a message from his wife leading him into a spooky town. After that quick little ripoff intro, the game starts and it's just, it's immediately bad. The control is not good. Movement is stuttery, you're very slow. It's kind of hard to describe, but something as simple as moving around feels bad in this game. 
Like the concept's simple to grasp. You stay in the light, or these not really scary at all people in the dark who are way too obvious will kill you. That'd be fine, but the game is all over the place as far as light implementation goes. They expect you to go through some areas that are dark, and those are fine to stand in, but other areas are not. It's trial and error, and some sections feel like you shouldn't be able to pass through, but you can. I, like, sometimes the game just kills you for no reason, too. Like, here, where it wants me to explore a gas station, and the road is lit up, I'm standing directly under the light, but oh, the game killed me. On top of that, the game just isn't scary, like at all. For a game like this to work, you need atmosphere and tension, and it does not have it. At number two is WWE 2K Battlegrounds. After the disastrous launch of 2K20, 2K decided in their infinite wisdom to release this thing instead of another, you know, annual installment of their now infamous wrestling series. They probably figured it couldn't be worse, right? Well, it's not a total broken mess like 2K20, but it's also not much better. It bills itself as a kind of more arcadey answer to those WWE 2K games. It had some potential to be a fun party game, but it's just, it's super cheap. One of the laziest things about it is there's no unique movesets. There's five different archetypes and that is it. The only thing that differentiates the dozens of wrestlers in this game is their entrances, their taunts, and their special moves. And that is it. All the powerhouses fight the same as every other powerhouse. All of the high flyers the same as high flyers. It's just super lazy. Like to the point where it is hard to believe how bad it is. But even worse is the selection of wrestlers. There's only 19 male and 10 female wrestlers to pick from the list. The rest you have to buy either with in-game currency or through microtransactions. And the selection is truly bizarre, with most of the iconic wrestlers you'd expect in a game like this having to be unlocked. There's a few modes, like this really bizarrely lame campaign mode, with these little crappy comic book cutscenes. They basically show Stone Cold Steve Austin recruiting a bunch of made-up wrestlers. It's really weird. Art style, not good. Weird mix of cartoony and realistic, doesn't do the game any favors. Uh, cause they look all dead in the eyes. It is, it's creepy. To say the least, it's a game that expects you to play for hours on top of hours to unlock the wrestlers you might actually want, but it gets tedious after literally an hour, if that, and there is just very little else to get into. And finally at number one is G.I. Joe Operation Blackout. Like, remember those Transformers War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron games that came out a while back? Imagine those, but bad. That's G.I. Joe Operation Blackout, a crappier version of those games or an even worse version of Battleborn. Anyone remember Battleborn? Yeah. Basically, it's a game where you and possibly one other player, not online though, the game is strictly couch co-op only, at least on PC, play through a linear campaign as either G.I. Joe's or Cobra, you try to save the world or take it over respectively. Let's say the obvious, the game is ugly. The environments are incredibly basic, they are barren looking, the character models are weird, lumpy, potato-like, possibly made of socks. And cutscenes are just simple animated still frames of what looks like hastily drawn concept art. The game looks so cheap and it feels more cheap with stiff controls and awkward animations all around. Actually moving around and shooting feel okay, at least maybe better than you think with how bad everything else is. But the missions are so brain dead, it becomes really monotonous really fast. So anything it does right doesn't matter. You run towards an objective in an overly spacious environment where enemies literally teleport in front of you and either stand in one place or walk closer to one of the many explosive barrels so you can blow them up. Or uh, the other thing they might do is just run directly at you. That is it. Very simple AI in this game. Boss battles consist of mostly fighting named characters that just sort of shuffle around listlessly and fight you like a bad CPU opponent in a multiplayer shooter. It's just not good. Like maybe if you really love G.I. Joe, you might get something out of this, but I don't think that most people will. Couple of bonus games for you. Twin Mirror. We expected a lot more from Don't Nod, the developer behind games like Life is Strange and Vampire. Uh, this is not a good game. I played it a few hours and it does look nice. The story just is not all that interesting though. And the opening sections are at least mostly just full of dull conversations. There is not much to engage with here, unfortunately. Next is the Elder Scrolls Blades on Switch. 
which I don't know why exists. It's a port of a mobile game that somehow runs bad on the Switch, a much more powerful piece of hardware. It's stuttery and blurry with terrible load times. Like, it's super basic as far as gameplay goes. You walk up to enemies in small linear stages and you tap buttons until they die. Then you open loot chests and wait on cooldown times in your settlement. It's a free-to-play game. With Skyrim already being on Switch, I have no idea why this exists. And finally, let's just briefly talk about Cyberpunk 2077 on PS4 and Xbox One. It looks so bad. When you're walking around, you see people in textures that look blurrier than PlayStation 1, and I'm not joking, they really do. And that's not even mentioning the bugs. Cyberpunk is just an awful experience on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And it would have been crazy to think about before release, but it is completely true. It's terrible. That is all for today. What do you think? Were any of these games particularly bad in your opinion? Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Do not forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.